In the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Apologies for the slight delay in beginning. I think I'm losing the plot, which won't come as news to many, I know. I was actually in the sacristy looking at the live stream, where on the live stream the beautiful words for that hymn that we've just heard were being displayed on the screen. So I was reading them and reflecting on them and thinking of St. Ambrose, who we celebrate today, and the words came to an end and there was a nice piece of silence and I found myself thinking, I wonder what will happen next and suddenly realised that what's meant to happen next is I ring the bell and come out. So apologies that I got tied up in my own little world for a moment. But it was good to reflect on those words and a life of this extraordinary man, bishop and doctor of the church. I have to be careful, I've made the mistake in the past of saying all that I know by way of introduction and then finding myself a little left to add at the homily. But enough to, to begin by reflecting on the great responsiveness that he showed to whatever God called him to do. As we begin this Mass, we recognise that we have, in our own way, perhaps been sluggish in response, so we ask for new strength and the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God. Lord, have mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation. Christ, have mercy. You are the head of the body, the church. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who made the bishop St. Ambrose a teacher of the Catholic faith and a model of apostolic courage, raise up in your church men after your own heart to govern her with courage and wisdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her, that her sin is atoned for. That she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, Prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord, makes a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice commands, cry, and I answered, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass and its beauty like the wild flowers. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on them. The grass is without doubt the people. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God remains forever. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arms subduing all things to him. The prize of his victory is with him. 
His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them against his breast and leading to their rest the mother ewes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here is our God coming with power. Here is our God coming with power. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his help day by day. Here yes, is our God, God coming, coming with power. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Proclaim to the nations, God is king. He will judge the people with fairness. Here yes, is our God coming with power. Let the heavens rejoice and the earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all it bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout with joy at the presence of the Lord, for he comes. He comes to rule the earth. Here is our God coming with power. With justice he will rule the world. He will judge the peoples with his truth. Yeah. Here is, is our, our God, God coming, coming with, with power. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come Lord, do not delay. Forgive the sins of your people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Tell me, suppose a man has a hundred sheep and one of them strays. Will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hillside and go in search of the stray? I tell you solemnly, if he finds it, it will give him more joy than do the ninety-nine that do not stray at all. Similarly, it is never the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Not being sheep farmers ourselves, we perhaps struggle to realise the full impact of what the Lord has just said. He's grown up in a community uh, of farmers and vine dressers, so obviously has a deep understanding of uh, the significance of uh, the image, the parables that he offers. I think it was brought clear for me in uh, Peru when I was there, and I was talking to, to someone who was saying that they really struggle uh, with the understanding of that sense of the flock and the shepherd leaving them to go after the one, because he pointed out that without the shepherd there, the other 99 will just disperse to, to the winds, as it were, that they don't have neatly fenced fields and gates and ways of controlling the sheep. So the thought that you would leave the 99 is just unthinkable. In fact, as there are no children present, I can say what he actually said was that if uh, uh, the, the hundredth sheep strayed off and it remained within range of his gun, he'd simply shoot it and have it for, for a meal uh, and while he stayed with the other 99 and cared for them. And our Lord would be aware of that. He's not naive about the impact these words are having and he intends it to be a challenge. How extraordinary that God would care for each individual in such a way that he would allow his focus to be almost entirely, as it were, on that one and go in search of that one and rejoice when that one was found. It's that sense of the true shepherd. It's a reading which occurs on this Tuesday of the second week of Advent that is not at all inappropriate for St. Ambrose, himself called to be a shepherd, 
uh, shepherd as bishop of Milan. He, uh, he said too much, um, was uh, turned out to, to be his uh, challenge, as it were, because the, the people in Milan were arguing about who would be the next bishop, and he stepped in to try and bring a bit of peace and harmony to the debate. So they all turned on him and said, well, why don't you become bishop then? He pointed out that he hadn't even been baptized yet, which was not unusual in those days. And so uh, they, shall we say, encouraged him to be uh, baptized, ordained priest, and then become their bishop. And the wisdom of the people was demonstrated in the extraordinary care uh, in his ministry. He immediately gave his possessions to the poor. He devoted himself uh, to uh, the service and building up of the people of God. He became a real shepherd uh, to them. And he wrote to uh, bishops who might follow him. And this is part of the reason he's been declared doctor of the church, was for his uh, preaching and teaching. Um, and he wrote to them about what uh, they should undertake as their principal role about proclaiming that word of God to the flock that needed to hear it. And it seems to me in many ways his words of encouragement uh, to, to other bishops uh, apply equally to all of us who have a vocation and who perhaps may have 101 reasons ourselves why we can't immediately engage, though I suspect none of our reasons would be quite as good as I'm not even baptised yet. And if that reason can be overcome, then surely any hesitancy on our part should be equally overcome. And we should uh, set ourselves in whatever vocation, in whatever calling we have uh, to take uh, to, to heart the words of St. Ambrose as he spoke uh, about the importance uh, of God's word in the church and the importance that it be spoken to others. He taught, although the elements of this world constantly beat upon the church with crashing sounds, the church possesses the safest harbour of salvation for all in distress. Although the church is tossed about on the seas, it rides easily on rivers, especially those rivers that scripture speaks of. The rivers have lifted up their voice. These are the rivers flowing from the heart of a man who is given drink by Christ and who receives the Spirit of God. When these rivers overflow with the grace of the Spirit, they lift up their voice. There is also a stream which flows down on God's saints like a torrent. There is a rushing river giving joy to the heart This is at peace and makes for peace. Whoever has received from the fullness of this river, like John the Baptist, like Peter and Paul, lift up their voice. Just as the apostles lifted up their voices and preached the gospel throughout the world, so those who drink these waters begin to preach the good news of the Lord Jesus. Drink then from Christ so that your voice may also be heard. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. 
It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Mass is being offered for the well-being of Miriam. So let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, May the Holy Spirit fill us with that light of faith by which he constantly enlightened St. Ambrose for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. Lead us who have been strengthened by the power of this sacrament, O Lord, to so profit from the teaching of St. Ambrose that hastening fearlessly along your paths we may be prepared for the delights of the eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Thank you to the stewards and the IT 
for making it possible for us to be here. Reminder, this evening, 6 p.m. evening prayer. Any intentions to office at cpg.church? Celebration too, that tomorrow, a uh, reminder too rather, uh, tomorrow we celebrate uh, the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Do please encourage others to become a part of the celebration, uh, or if they can't be here physically, uh, to join on live stream. Um, I should just mention in advance, it's possible that it will arrive early and you will see a very large piece of equipment in the church, which will be with us for the next couple of days. Um, the projector bulbs have decided that they've reached the end of their natural life. Um, replacing the bulb itself uh, is quite easy and relatively cheap. Getting up to it is a whole different matter. Um, so all the expense will be in some uh, quite sophisticated equipment, which will be here for a couple of days to get them up there and indeed to do the lights while they're here too. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. <laughs>